Welcome to Whitetail Rendezvous, hosted by Bruce Hutchin. I'm so happy you've joined us today, and you're going to find out a lot about whitetail hunting on the show. This is Whitetail Rendezvous Podcast, episode number 363. It's never too early to think about food plots. Whitetail Rendezvous has an ebook for you. Just simply text 33444 Food Plot to get your copy. Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous. This is your host, Bruce Hutchin. I'm at the Iowa Deer Classic, and I'm hanging with Jesse Moore. Jesse sells and distributes Middle River Buck Blinds. Jesse, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bruce. Now, Jesse, my friend uh, Chris Edwards over at Rack said, I need to talk to you because you got one of the best blinds in the business. So let's start right off and talk about Middle River Buck Blinds. Yeah, Bruce, we think they're top of the line deer hunting blinds, uh, 10-year warranty on the camouflage paint, and just really good products. The windows have two-year warranties, um, and we have a huge variety from $1,500 all the way up to $15,000. Yeah, more and more people are getting my age, and so hang-ons are completely out for me. I can still hunt ladder stands, a double ladder stand, but I'm going to more and more to um, either permanent blinds or run-and-gun pop-up blinds. So what makes your blind so special for guys like me? Well, our blinds that or anything over four foot off the ground have actually a step instead of a ladder, double rails to hang on to. And they're just, they're just more like a home when you get in them. They're nice and quiet, very well sealed, no insects, um, and very quiet. Now what happens when the snow flies and the wind blows? Uh, Do I put a heater in here or how do I stay warm? You can put a little buddy heater in them. Um, the only problem with that is, is just like any other uh, heat, the blind is not ventilated very well, so you're going to need to crack a window just to to save yourself, I, I guess. Now, why do people buy your blind? Let's talk about the hunters that are buying it and, and why they use it year after year after year. Quality, safety, and I think above all is is a lot of guys have found out this is the last blind they're going to buy. They, they won't fall apart. They won't deteriorate in the weather, and the animals and the rodents and the insects can't get in. So the squirrels can't come in and eat my seed? No, we uh, experienced that with other blinds, the plastic ones and the fiberglass, and the squirrels just seem to love that product. Um, they can't eat through our metal frame or, or our metal skin, 26-gauge metal skin. So when I'm thinking about putting up a permanent blind, what are some of the things that I really have to be smart of so I leave, put that blind up and just leave it for year after year after year? Well, the biggest concern is, is of course, safety. The, the blinds need to be set on level ground the best you can and make sure they're secured down. We use a, a tie-down system with cable and a turnbuckle, and it seems to work really, really well. So in your opinion, why are people successful shooting bucks and does um, out of a permanent blind? Well, I think the most thing is is the concealment. The camo just really b- blends in very well. Uh, the windows slide up and down very quietly. Uh, it's, they're just, there's no noise to them. So I, I'm looking at, you know, youth or women, what a wonderful way to introduce them to the outdoors. One, they're going to be warm-ish. Two, um, they can kind of move around because the deer's not going to see all their, their movement. Uh, any other thoughts about why youth and women would like this blind? Well, I think the most of it is is, is you're not sitting out on a, uh, on a tree stand and freezing your buns off is the biggest thing. They're nice and warm, and we have a lot more women that are getting into these blinds and taking up hunting because they are so comfortable. Let's talk about your hunting heritage. How long have you been hunting whitetails yourself? Probably as soon as my dad would let me go with a gun by myself in uh, northeast Missouri and and uh, just really enjoyed it every day after that. Share some of the lessons he taught you early on that you carried now through um, your adulthood and then pass it on to kids and other people that are interested in hunting. Well, my dad was not a hunter. I grew up on a dairy farm and, and he did not hunt. And so I was kind of self-taught and, and learned from the neighbors and just watching and listening how they done everything. Yeah, it's amazing how much you can learn from other folks. And um, thinking about the bucks, did you hunt last fall, I should ask? No, I didn't. So <laughs> you didn't hunt last fall. So let's talk about your last successful hunt. 
well, that was probably about eight to 10 years ago in, in Northeast Missouri. And I haven't hunted a whole lot since, but I try to get out and, and hunt some coyotes and certain things like that. But deer hunting, it just don't seem to fit in with my nine to five schedule. Yeah. It's heck when the work is on the way, when people are looking at what size of blind they want, what are some of your recommendations? Well, the blind we're setting in right now, Bruce, is is a five by six economy, non insulated. It's probably one of our better sellers. Um, it's big enough for two people, but yet not spendy. Yeah, we're sitting in here doing the interview. We got two chairs, and and I think it would be great for one person, especially all the gear I bring out. If I'm going to do an all day sit, but you could get a person in here. I think uh, pretty easy for four or five hours. Your thoughts? Yeah, a lot of people, almost everybody that we sell to the 5 by 6 or larger, there's at least two people that go. We also have a 6 by 10 model here that I've have heard of as many as five people sit in it. Well, that would be kind of interesting, especially if a buck comes out and everybody picks a window, I guess. So where are you located? How do people get a hold of you? We're located on Interstate 80, just west of Des Moines, about 45 miles in Casey, Iowa. We also have a Facebook page, or you can visit us at middleriverbuckblinds.com. Well, thanks for that. And anything else you want to add? I think that's about it for today, Bruce. We also sell feeders and protein feeders and things like that. Of course, you have to follow the DNR rules when you use this product. Oh, I, I didn't realize you had feeders. Let's spend a couple of minutes talking about them and why they're so effective here in Iowa and other places where... Again, you got to check the rules and the regs, but um, when you apply them, boy, they, they sure look like they get the feet out there real good. Yeah, they're a really good product as well. Um, yeah, it just gets back to the just have to follow the rules and regulations of the DNR, but they can be used in the state of Iowa. Now, the, the deer, kind of like in Texas, the, the machine goes off and then they come running in it. Is that the same way it happens here? Well, basically, they, they have timers on them. You can set them to go off as many times as six times a day and for as long as you want them. Uh, if you set a certain time, usually the deer just get in a habit and come in. So are these to feed the deer or are these to feed the deer and shoot the deer? These are just a supplement of protein for the deer, and we're trying to grow bigger and better horns. So do some people sit on the, on the feeders and, and shoot deer off the feeders? No, that is totally illegal. Thanks for that. And again, folks, you know, I, I come out of Colorado, so I travel different states, and so I don't know all the rules and regulations. So to underscore that, if you're going to set up feeders, if you're going to do supplemental feeding, if you're going to grow food plots, you know, just check with your DNR. Just call them and say, hey, this is what I'm planning to do. You know, tell me the rules and regs and tell me the things and, hey, come on out and see what I'm doing. And I want to make sure that uh, you're happy with what I'm doing and I'm not breaking the law. So with that, Jesse Moore, thank you so much for being a guest on Whitetail Rendezvous Special from Iowa Deer Classic. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, where you can listen and learn from the experts so you can be more successful on your next hunt. Until next time, listen, learn, and succeed.